Hi, my name is Kate Millens. In this vlog, I'm going to be discussing the internal and micro environment of companies and why these areas are the building blocks for marketing managers' decisions. Micro forces are external from the company, but they normally have organisation specific impact. So, marketing managers should convey an analysis of their micro environment ahead of deciding on their corporate strategy. The internal environment also needs to be considered by marketing managers. It's composed of diverse elements present inside the organisation that have the ability to guide the decisions of the business. These changes can be monitored through environmental scanning, which entails the gathering and analysing of information and changes related to the marketing environment. Marketers who don't reshape their strategies believe their companies unprepared to capitalise on marketing opportunities or to cope with threats created by the changes is the employees. The members of the organisation can give a positive or negative image of the company when they interact with external publics. The effect of negative communication between employees and customers can be very damaging to an organisation. Twitter has a good company culture. All the employees rave about the team-oriented working environment and the perks they receive like free yoga classes. Marketers must create an effective company culture to ensure employees understand the company's strategic plan by communicating with them and ensuring plans are coordinated and executed. If the strategy isn't suited to the culture, it will fail to reach objectives. In customers, which are the most crucial stakeholders. According to Peter F. Drucker, there is only one valid definition of business purpose, that is to create a customer. Customers have rising expectations as well as more empowerment due to the choice of products and services available to them and easier access to information about the products and services on offer. Marketing managers must contemplate the needs of customers and how to respond to these requirements when discussing the direction of their strategic plan. Consumer tastes are also continuing to change. One business that failed to keep up to date with micro changes was Toys R Us. They failed to recognise that their consumers' behaviours had changed, as children now play online video games rather than with physical toys. If they had realised this attitude changed sooner, they may have been able to adapt and their fate might have been different. Another micro-environment factor which is very important is the advancement of technology and how consumers use it. Failure to get on board with social media and the internet is one way to secure your organisation's failure. Thomas Cook was recently announced bankrupt with a 1.5 billion loss as they didn't innovate and take the opportunity thrown at them by the changing environment. Holidaygoers now book their holidays in line as it can be done with the click of a button. However, Thomas Cook still focused on their high street outlets. If the company had recognised the microenvironment change, they could have opted to focus more on the process of booking a holiday online and may have succeeded. Competitors Marketers must use competitor monitoring to acquire an in-depth understanding of their competition in order to differentiate their product, brand and proposition. In order to stay ahead of the growing amounts of competition, an organisation must interact with its customers on social media. Misguided has many competitors like Boohoo and Pretty Little Thing, yet they continue to stay ahead by engaging with customers on social media. A woman tweeted Misguided asking them to create a jeans and a nice top section on their website. A few weeks later, Misguided announced they'd created the section. The story went viral, creating further engagement with consumers. To stay competitive, businesses must listen to exactly what the customers require and create that competitive advantage. Michael Porter identified five forces which offers a useful approach to competitive analysis. Competitive rivalry. This force is the major determinant on how competitive and profitable an industry is. When rivalry is intense, organisations have to compete aggressively for market share. Marketers can determine how attractive a market is by regarding how many competitors there are. Bargaining power of suppliers. Bargaining power of suppliers is determined by how straightforward it is for your suppliers to increase their prices. Suppliers have strong bargaining power where there are a few suppliers and a lot of buyers, which can negatively impact profits as you have to pay more for materials. Bargaining power of customers. If there are only a couple of buyers in the market, they are usually able to dictate prices. Customers have less power when the product or service is highly differentiated as they tend to be brand loyal due to that being the only one of its type. Threat of potential entrants. Markets which are profitable are seen as attractive to new entrants, but the more profitable they are, the more likely they are to have barriers to entry, such as economies of scale, product differentiation and patents. Threat of substitute products. Substitutes are products similar to others. Some substitute products have attractive prices and a better quality, which is when buyers will switch from one product to another with little cost. The microenvironment 
are uncontrollable variables, which is why they should be the building blocks of marketing managers' decisions. Without the analysis of the microenvironment, then a business's marketing plan is likely to fail. An organisation must use the controllable internal environment in order to respond correctly to the uncontrollable microenvironment, and only then will the right decisions be made.